a Netflix original film. The Wi-Fi is working. In the event of a global communications breakdown, do the following. Stay inside. What just happened here is happening everywhere. Avoid strangers. We've all been deserted. I don't trust them. And most importantly, do not panic. Julia Roberts. What happens next? Mahershala Ali. I knew something was coming. Leave the world behind. Rated R. In select theaters now and on Netflix December 8th. Now that it's getting dark at four, we're all feeling the urge to curl up at home with something warm to drink and something good to read. And because Portland has one of the best communities of comic book creators in the world, we thought we'd get a good list of locally made titles worth checking out this month. So today on CityCast Portland, we're talking with Katie Pride, owner of the Southeast Portland comic book shop, Books with Pictures, which by the way, was ranked the best comic book store in the world by the Will Eisner Comic Industry Awards last year. So Katie's here to give us her top picks, everything from non-superhero titles to the most interesting Marvel and DC offerings to fun books for kids. And gift season is coming up, so this might help with some ideas. It's Monday, November 20th. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. Congratulations on being the owner of the best comic book shop in the world. Well, thank you very much. (laughs) Like, what do you think you're doing that's a bit different than anyone else? Well, we really work on being as lowest possible barrier to entry for reading comic books. There's a little bit of a reputation in comics and graphic novels that you sort of already have to know something before you start to come in and play in the pool. And Mm -hmm. we just want to make sure that everybody feels welcome and to create a space that feels like you can walk in just like you'd walk into a bookstore and you're very invited to come and get recommendations. And because we focus so much on diversity in our stocking, it's also important to us that every reader come in and, and be able to find books that appeal to them, that have characters that look like them, that have creators who they share things in common with. So you're saying that you're trying to make it super inviting for people and uh, and for like someone who's never, you know, maybe hasn't read comics. Because I just feel like I think there's a lot of people who have either never picked up a comic book or they're like me and haven't really read them since they were like teenagers. Like, how do you recommend people get back into browsing for a comic book that speaks to them? Yeah, that's a great question. I do think that um, asking for help, if you are the kind of person who is not terrified asking for help, is really important. But um, I also think that there are some really great, uh, diversely focused best of lists online. If you want to just do a Google search for not just best comics, but best comics with Black protagonists or best gay comics or whatever it is that you're looking for. One of the funny things about the market right now is that graphic novels for kids and teens have absolutely blown up. And so there's an amazing amount of material that maybe if you have kids, your kids know about that you don't know about. Yeah, it's interesting because whenever I think about graphic novels, I think like, oh, that is the medium for like the serious comic book writer. Like, could you explain the difference between like a comic book and a graphic novel for those who are just like, what are they talking about? Okay, so there is, of course, a controversy, because how could there not be a controversy? But in my very serious professional opinion, there is no significant difference between a comic and a graphic novel. Okay. And a graphic novel refers to something that is still sequential art or comics art, but was not released initially as stapled magazines, but only ever existed as a book with a spine, um, as one cohesive piece. That said, uh, there's lots of books that cross that line. Watchmen, for example, was published 30 years ago as a series of sequential comic books, but that's not how we read it. We read it as a graphic novel. It reads beautifully as a graphic novel. We consider it a graphic novel now. So I think that what's more interesting is to remember that comic books are a medium, not a genre, that Art that tells pictures in order is one of the oldest ways that humans have told stories and that you can tell a story about absolutely anything using pictures and words 
that tell a story in order. I spend a lot of time reminding people that you can read comics and never touch a superhero or somebody wearing tights and a cape. And that comic books about superheroes are kind of spectacular right now. And that if you are a serious literary reader, you can also read comics with major superheroes in them and still have a beautiful, immersive literary reading experience, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. You know what? Everything you're saying, I feel like Kelly Suda Connick, when we had her on, that was like her entire platform. Like she was just going off about it. And, you know, she writes some of the best uh, superhero comic books right now. I mean, now. she's on my list here. I adore <laughs> Kelly Sue. She's like my comic book mom, um, which is funny to say because our kids are the same age, but she's still my comic book mom. <laughs> so you're a big advocate for these type of offbeat, you know, off the beaten path superhero comic books. You know, I have to admit that that might be my least favorite genre. So like, since we're already talking about it, like, what would you recommend? So a um, Kelly Sue's the top of my list. Her Wonder Woman Historia, the Amazons that came out uh, earlier this year is an absolutely spectacular retelling of Greek mythology. It's specifically set in the period immediately before Wonder Woman is born. So if you're a person who like watched that first Wonder Woman movie and saw the Wonder Woman's training on Themyscira and were like, I just want to live here. Like, how do I yeah. just live here <laughs> with the horses and the bows and the and the warrior women? And like, I don't care about going to World War One. I. I just want to be yeah. here. Uh, it's that. It's that story. It's the story of the relationship between these women and their gods uh, or their goddesses, rather, and um, a lot of sort of reaching into and retelling traditional stories of Greek myth. It's spectacularly drawn, uh, and it's available, the first volume, as a, as a hardcover right now. Um, another recommendation from Portland Creators is a book called Superman's Pal Jimmy Olsen. Uh, that is the opposite of Wonder Woman Historia in a lot of ways. It is a madcap, goofy, silly book written by Matt Fraction and drawn by Portland artist Steve Lieber that really draws on this sort of 1960s Jimmy Olsen is a goofy kid reporter to whom terrible things happen. Uh, <laughs> in this particular story, uh, Jimmy Olsen now, of course, keeps still works for the Daily Planet, but the Daily Planet is an online news site where you got to do it for the clicks. Uh, so Jimmy Olsen is doing increasingly dangerous stunts in order to get, you know, the the clicks and the viral videos, discovers that someone, and he does not know who, is trying to kill him uh, by sabotaging his stunts. And so he goes on the run from beautiful, sunny Metropolis to dark, gloomy, Batman-dominated uh, Gotham. And it's the story of Jimmy Olsen and his fabulous sister, uh, trying to save Jimmy from getting murdered in Gotham City, where he does not belong thematically. And it's extremely silly and charming. And um, just the thing about that book that is a very Portland thing about that book is that Steve and Matt, the writer and the artist, have been friends for probably 25 years. And there is a feeling when you read the scripts that Matt is trying to make Steve laugh. <laughs> and there is a feeling when you look at the pages that Steve is trying to one up however funny Matt thought he was being by drawing something even sillier. So I love that. Another book, more Portlanders and a little bit of overlap. Writer Mark Russell worked with that same artist, Steve Lieber, to write an intensely depressive superhero book called One Star Squadron. One Star Squadron is about those superheroes who are like, they've got powers, but they're maybe not the Justice League or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way that they're making their living is through gig, gig work. There's an app where you can call yourself a superhero for your personal protection needs or maybe just to perform at a birthday party. Um, and it's all <laughs> these superpowered gig workers dealing with being late on rent and their drug addiction problems. And that sounds know, pretty the, fun. Actually, the corporate yeah. <laughs> takeover that's trying to take over what the app is is doing oh and squeeze more money out of it. It's funny. It's sad. It's one of those stories where there's a there is a supervillain, but the real supervillain is late capitalism. It's you know it's a fabulous ride. 
Um, the real super villain was the friends we made along. No, Wait, what's the name no. of that? <laughs> what's it's called that One book? Star Squadron, <laughs> and it's from DC Comics. All right, well, let's take a quick break here, and when we come back, Katie's picks on the best Portland indie titles. So what about, uh, it, let's walk away from from superheroes for a second. Like, what about like the more indie comics? Because I feel like those were the ones that got a lot of people into comic books, you know, like people who would normally start reading. Like, what, Absolutely. Like, what are a few ones that people should check out? So I definitely think that people should look at a book called Black Cloak, which is by Portland writer Kelly Thompson, along with artist Meredith McLaren and Becca Carey on colors. Um, and it is a murder mystery in a world of humans and mermaids. It's got a very sort of noir style. Um, huh. It's often very dark. It's often very s- sort of stark art um, with this really strong cartooning element as well. So lots of big facial expressions. And then it's a murder mystery that moves between this this world on land, the last city on earth, and this world under the sea. And so it's beautiful. It's weird. It's sci-fi fantasy. It is a fabulous Portland writer, which I always like to recommend. And yeah, it's it's hard-boiled detectives in a fantasy world and a real joy. Uh, and that one comes from Image Comics and is available in paperback right now. Any other ones? Yeah, of course. I could do this all day. <laughs> um, but I want to recommend uh, Dirtbag Rapture. Dirtbag Rapture, it's a good title, right? right. Uh, Dirtbag Rapture is about a extremely uh, just trashy stoner woman named Kat who, after a near-death experience, can not only see and hear ghosts, but can bring them inside of her, which is useful for ghosts who are tied to a particular place because they can hire her to take them from one place to another. How do ghosts have money? Like, how are they hiring her? Uh, hire is there might like be a ve- strong. Uh, is there like a, um, a Venmo ghost app? Coerced. Like, coerced. coerced. Abused. Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. No, but they can also, they can tell her things. Uh, oh, so, gotcha. so there's there's some currency in, in knowledge and information. But that is by Portland writer Chris Sabella. And so her life as a transporter of ghosts winds her up in a massive demonic battle for the end of the world. Uh, but it's definitely, it's lots of stoner culture. It's lots of like older millennial hopelessness in a really nice way. Um, And it takes place a lot in Kat's mindscape, which I really enjoy. So it's all of these ghosts ghosts living in what is effectively a shitty hotel in Kat's brain. Mm. I love it. It's great. It would have been more Portland if it was goats, but I really... Goats, that's true. (laughs) Just a Um, bunch of goats just clearing the mindscape. I Um, don't have goats, but I do have mech wearing space witches Ooh, okay in a book called the forged uh by portland writer greg rucka and it is a story about a set of woman super soldiers who are highly trained in service of their eternal impress in order to defend against aliens which they have never met and this is the story of their first contact with an alien race. Um, it goes badly. There is a great deal of space magic combat. Uh, and it is a rip-roaring good time. Yeah. Well, finally, you know, a big portion of your shop is devoted to comics for kids. And so what are, some, like, I would just say three titles you'd recommend to any parents listening that maybe just want to buy their kids some comic books. Yeah, absolutely. Buy your kids some comic books. I am going to return to Portlanders because I love them. I'm going to talk about Jonathan Hill's Tales of a Seventh Grade Lizard Boy, which is a story about feeling like an alien when you are in middle school. And 
Uh, it's got elements of racial not belonging. It's got elements of just feeling like a big smelly weirdo. And it's a story about finding your friends and finding your place. It's really beautiful. And uh, one of my customers at the Portland Book Festival this year said that she bought it for her kid from me last year. And it actually wound up being the thing that triggered his big middle school glow up. It it meant that he started talking to people and finding friends and feeling more comfortable with himself. So big just accolades for that book. It's beautiful. Uh, recently released from Sierra Miller, who is not only a Portlander, she used to work at my store and is just a gem of a human being. Uh, she just came out with a book called Out There. Out There is a book about being a teenager living in Roswell, New Mexico, whose dad is convinced that he has been abducted by aliens. And uh, sort of that moment in adolescence when you begin to realize that your parents are human beings and maybe a little bit flawed and that shift toward adulthood. Uh, it's a beautiful story. It has a really silly dog. It has a big, long Southwestern road trip in it. A great time. Um, and then I also want to recommend uh, Caitlin Likes' The Hundredth Voice. This is a middle grade spooky story. And so anybody who was listening to my spooky story descriptions before and thinking, I wish I had that for my kid, this is that book. It is set in a haunted music school and includes um, the fae folk, not cute scaries, but like not cute fairies, but like scary fairies yeah. scary fairies and i know what you're talking about yeah scary fairies um caitlin's also local and sort of just getting her start and uh, this is the one where if your kid picks it up you know that whatever they're wearing today they have a great deal of eyeliner in their near future um so it's it's very goth it's very lovely um <laughs> so if you have like a bourgeois in goth like this this might be the one it's such a good pick yeah absolutely <laughs> I don't care if they're wearing a unicorn rainbow jacket right now. Like the, the goth is in their future. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Katie, for hanging with us and giving us some titles to check out. You know, while it's a little rainy, a lot of us are choosing more indoor time. I feel like this is the perfect list uh, for anyone out there just wondering what they should be reading. And wh where's your shop again? Where is it located? Yeah, I am on the southwest corner of Lad's Edition. I am specifically at Southeast Division and 14th. I'm right across from Abernathy Elementary School and very near to Pine State Biscuits, if you like that sort of thing. Um, and the shop also has a record store in the basement called My Vinyl Underground, so you can get all of your obsolete media in one place. And uh, behind the shop, there's also a food cart pod called the Short Box Food Carts, where you can get award-winning waffles and vegan ice cream and really good sandwiches and bowls. So you That's can a make day. a whole day of it if you want. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Katie. Thanks for hanging out with us. Claudia, this was really fun. Anytime. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. <laughs>